Chat tap in the bando Freestyle Freestyle Hi guys! <laughs> Guess who? That's it, My name is George The George Omaru You can call me the lion um, I'm here with Abi Abi Akinboye And we've taken over this show The show now belongs to me um, you all can join me every week on this YouTube channel. We're going to have fun together. We're going to talk about so many things. I'm going to give you life lessons <laughs> to make you better people. Okay, so today we're doing this with Abby. Abby um, runs the 3A group, which consists of 3A travel, 3A entertainment, 3A events, and 3A auctions. It's going to share some life tips with you, and you're going to learn so much from it. So don't pause, don't stop, keep watching. Enjoy yourself. Bye. Wow. This is my channel. No, it's mine. <laughs> you came back this again. <laughs> <laughs> don't get it twisted. Just ain't taking over my channel. <laughs> but you did a good introduction, which is <laughs> hi guys. Good evening. It's evening over here. And today, guess who I have with me? I have the honor and privilege of having on my channel Abi Akingboye. He is the owner of three events. 3A auctions and 3A travel. So this young gentleman started in Nigeria with 3A travel, and then from there he sort of built up on it and grew the cha um, grew his business. Now it's like a conglomerate in Nigeria, and he's doing so well for himself. He partners with his wife, who does the event section of things, and he's gonna t give us some tips and tricks on today's video. You guys are gonna learn from him. Don't pause, don't stop, because you have a lot to learn. So, Abby, do you have any other thing to add to my introduction of you? Mm, I think you've done, you've done a good job. So. Okay. <laughs> so, what made you start in the travel industry? Why travel? Um, okay, in 2005, um, I noticed um, a gap in the market okay. whilst um, I was in uni. And I thought, hmm, it's something I can actually capitalize on. Yeah. So, um, based on this, I did a few research um, and, all, and then I kicked off. And since then, it's been from one level to another level, and um, it's paid off. So you just kept growing and growing over the years, yes. Did you two, like have any challenges starting because it's a bit of a unique industry, in a part of the world? Alongside the auction, I want you to speak on the auction. Like, what inspired you to start the auction? auction? Yeah. Okay. Um, I moved into Nigeria in 2010. Okay. On getting here, I realized a number of things we did back in the UK by buying properties and then renovating and selling them through auction were not available in Nigeria. So based on this, I went on the drawing board, I read up, I did the research, and then I started a company to basically tackle this and give people the privilege to basically buy things at below market value. And okay. then they can then flip it over and make profit. By doing this, we can create more jobs, opportunities, and okay. also give people the privilege of not wasting things, okay. but actually making something from it. So that's. But yeah. how was the reception in Nigeria? Because it's very new, it's rare. Yeah. What was the reception like when you started out, and now that you've grown to a certain stage, what's the reception for your business? I think we, um, with most things, at the beginning, it can be um, um, a bit challenging. And when we kicked off, people were a bit funny, you know, because okay. they weren't used to such. That kind of idea, you know, exactly. So we had to basically find a system that worked in the territory we just came into. Okay. You know, we had to now form things, move things around, flip things over. But over the last few months, um, actually, people are now getting very interested in it. So we're getting banks, companies and oh, all that bringing things to us. So what's so, happening differently over the past few months? I think people are now um, are now uh, um, um, understanding that look, rather than waste this, let's actually oh, okay. sell it off, auction it and get the money Make back money in. From it. So based on that now, people actually feel comfortable bringing things to us that look, sell this on time, auction it out and just pay us. So it's... At some point in your like business, did you ever miss having a 9 to 5? Never. Um, while, um, whilst I was in um, uni a few years ago, I told myself that I don't want to work for anyone. So I think for me, that has always been a driving force. Okay. So, so I know that 9 to 5 is not an think? option for me. Wow. So based on this, I know I need to work extra hard, stay up late till 12 o'clock, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. and just get things done because no um, because people can't pay my bill, I need to basically True. pay my own bill. And my boss can't pay me, I need to pay myself. So basically that's 
pushed me to work extra hard in getting to the level you need to be. But like I know income is never steady for entrepreneurs. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't because business is fluctuating. It's different from a nine to five where you have like a salary. At the end of the yeah. month, whether the business makes money or not, you have the salary. Yeah. So when you have those low times or low income periods, what do you do? Like how do you rough it out? I think something we do now is once we make a sales, we save a certain portion of it. Percentage okay. of it every month, and I would encourage people running a business to do such. So even when you don't sell on a particular month, you okay. have enough cash sitting anywhere that you can okay. always pull from, and you don't feel that much um, of a pressure in that particular month. So you have like a reserve. You, yes, oh, you okay. have to. Okay, that's interesting. So do you have any like for in aspiring entrepreneurs out there? It's Nigeria is not the easiest climate to yeah. be an entrepreneur. Yeah. So uh, you came into the market and you've been able to take over. So do you have any, what did you do differently than most of the other entrepreneurs we have out there? The first thing is, I think you need to be determined and dedicated. Okay. Um, when we moved in here, I moved in with a few friends and right now I can say I'm the only one standing. Okay. You know, they've all relocated back into the UK now. Oh, but wow. Which tells me that for some people, if you don't have that drive and the patient, mm -hmm. you know, you might not get a result. So that's oh, okay. a key factor. So they went back to 95. They went back difficult. to 95 years. Wow, so you have to be determined and dedicated if not, you're not going to. You really need to be. So, Abby, I feel like, can you say you left your comfort zone when you left UK for Nigeria? Um, definitely yes, I did. But one thing I've learned in life is you, you don't walk into something new without letting go of the old. Hmm. You see? So for me, I was actually quite comfortable um, and all that. But I felt there was more. I felt I could do more. I could uh, um, achieve more. I could break more grounds. So, um, and the um, reason why I thought, you know what? Let me leave that zone and just try something I've never tried before. So I just packed my bags and came into... But what you're doing now, why didn't you start doing it over there? Um, I felt that I needed to be in this zone. Okay. And the plans I had were not sitting perfectly well. Where you were. For that zone. So, so location is important. It is very important, yes. Ah, I see. To me, it is very important. So you need to leave your comfort zone. You really To be to. able to grow. Yes. You if you could to. do things differently, what would you do differently? Um, if I if, if I were to be really honest, I wouldn't change a thing. Nothing. Nothing. You had no struggle. Like I've you. learned most things you go through in life are actually lessons for the next phase. So okay. the things I've learned in the past are the things taking me through now, and the okay. things I'm going through now would be there for me in the future. So for me, it's very key not to get rid of anything in the past and just oh, learn okay. from it and move on. So when you face challenges, you just like think of it as a mistake yeah. and then you just move through it. Yeah. So, so. Name one like business regret you ever made. Um, one thing you regret like when it comes to doing business that you wish... Okay, I think the only thing I can think of right now was um, many years ago I invented a product Okay. And I got into the final stage of getting it into the market. Okay. So I needed four thousand pounds to get it to to get it out into the market, into the shelf, and um, I noticed I ran out of funds. So okay. I got an investor on board who promised to basically give me four thousand pounds wow. for twenty percent. So okay. the day we were meant to exchange all the contracts and payment, he turned everything around. That look, I'm giving you. 4k for 40 percent so that's oh. the double price of, of course what you know so at that stage i felt like no that's that's a cheat so yeah, i pulled the plug on, um, on the deal and he got nothing i got nothing if i were ah, to think okay. back now i probably would have said yes because you're better off having 60 percent than and having nothing at the end of the I day agree. so it's not really a regret but if i could change things I probably might do things in a different way. Okay, in a way. because you learn from yeah. that. So, what do you consider to be like your greatest achievement or your proudest moment when it comes to being an entrepreneur? Um, I think the fact that when I need to get things done, the funds is readily available, available at almost all times. Okay. You know, so to me, that's key. 
because that's one reason why we work. You know, you need sure. to basically get things done. I but how do you get the funds? funds? How, how do you always have funds? By running a business and planning your budget in a oh, okay. really good way. Okay. So you're not really spending everything you're getting. You're planting certain seed, you're investing, you're sowing seed, okay. you're blessing people at the same time because I've learned that by giving, you get more, you, get more, yeah, you know, so I do so much of that to be, you know, I'm very mindful of that. Okay. So by doing these things, by giving, saving, investing and all that, so that always puts you in a good shape to ensure that you always have funds. So you always have good financial standing. Yeah. I think wow. that, to me, that's a key. Yeah, that's a good accomplishment for an entrepreneur because it's very, very difficult. Most of the challenges that we see, like when I talk to entrepreneurs, most of their challenges finance. So yeah. if, if you're like on top of the game when it comes to finance, then I think you're going to go very far. So that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe, click the red button down below. You will always get a notification anytime and every time I post. I'm also going to leave um, his... Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm back. Guess who's Just back? Just channel. <laughs> okay, so Abby is a very good guy, you know. Uh -huh. He does all my flights for free. See what George is doing to my channel. <laughs> anyway, that was fun. That's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, click the red button down below. You'll always get a notification anytime and every time I post. I'm going to leave Abby's Instagram handles, his website, his social media, everything about him. So you can go and contact him on social media or you can send him an email. Really contact their businesses because they have good products out there that you guys don't want to miss. Until my next video, guys. I mean, that's it. I'm on Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Chucked up in a band door, 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 freestyle, freestyle.